So my name is Mandeep Mahal and I'm one of the MBA recruitment and admissions managers in the MBA team. I'm delighted to be here today to speak about the Laidlaw Scholarship and for today's session I'm going to give you some information about the scholarship, how to apply, the opportunity it brings, um, but most importantly you're going to hear from some of our scholars, so from some of our alumni and we do have a current student as well who will be joining us. So. I'll be joined sort of later by Jessica, Noose, Shruti and Ikalua shortly, and you'll get the opportunity to hear from them, ask questions. And in fact, actually, you can go ahead and start submitting those questions in that Q&A function, and we'll get to those sort of later in the session. Um, but then also do feel free to say hello in the chat and let us know where you're dialing from. Dialing from. We would like this session to be interactive. Um, but to get us started, I am going to switch my camera off so you're not distracted by my, by my face as I go through the slides. Okay, so to get us started, you can see a quote from the CEO of the Laidlaw Foundation. And what's really important to note from this quote is extraordinary women, but then also and who would not be otherwise be able to afford an MBA. So it's important to note that for the, for the scholarship, we are looking for exceptional talent who want to lead, lead in a responsible way and, and ask some of those big questions. Here at the Oxford MBA, we do have a slight focus on impact. We're really teaching you to become responsible business leaders and think about leading with purpose. Um, but what's great about the Laidlaw Scholarship that is also focused on those who would not otherwise be able to afford an MBA. We know MBAs are an expensive investment and it's great to have a scholarship that not only looks at merit-based academic achievements, but those who could not do this otherwise. Um, and I'd say that's a big element of the Laidlaw Foundation. So Laidlaw are looking to advance younger girls and women. And I would encourage you to have a look at their website. They have some great resources on there. They are not only working with um, business schools and MBAs, but also um, younger girls at college and school level. I'm so, so delighted to announce that we have hit gender parity for this year's class on the MBA. So 51% uh, of our class are female. So it's actually the first year that females have outnumbered the males and we've been doing a lot of work to get there over the last few years and I know working with the Laidlaw Foundation and having these amazing scholarships has attributed to that. Lord Laidlaw describes his mission and what drove him to start this scholarship was that he worked with a lot of women in leadership positions in his organisations and he saw the success of his organisations that had that gender balance and like we know there's a lot of research and reports out there that organisations who do have that balance do better. So that is really at the root of that. And it's not about checking a box and having parity to reach the statistic. This is about women getting into those leadership positions, the opportunity this affords to women who might have not otherwise applied or considered an MBA. Um, they can go ahead and reach that high level of leadership, those high level roles that they want to get towards. Um, the Laidlaw Scholarship has been running with other schools globally for five years, so there is a considerable network of other Laidlaw Scholars, so I know there's um, LBS, London Business School, there's Columbia, I believe HEC, Paris have also um, recently just joined, so there is a considerable network of other Laidlaw Scholars. And this picture is our current Scholars at the Scholars Breakfast that we host at the start of the academic year back in September. If we get into the details of the scholarships, so there are up to 10 awards and they range from partial to full awards and full awards are covering the full tuition fee for the year that you are applying to. And the criteria for the scholarship is made up of different parts and you're being assessed on different elements, different parts by the scholarship committee. We are looking for academic excellence and I suppose that goes without saying it is the University of Oxford that you are applying to and we are looking for that in your MBA application that academic excellence so looking at your bachelor's degree your GMAT or GRE um, 
I won't go into sort of the nitty gritty details of the application requirements for the Oxford MBA in this webinar. But what I will say is that we do look at applications holistically. So you can certainly look to balance those those two criteria, the degree and the GMAT. And we don't have hard requirements. We advise on what is competitive, but there is a balance. So if you're someone who's dialing in today and let's say one element, let's say your degree is, is slightly lower, um, you can balance that out with a slightly higher GMAT or G GRE and vice versa. You can also show excellence through previous university awards prizes and other degrees beyond your bachelor's degree, and also through some extracurriculars as well. In terms of demonstrating that financial need, there is some detailed guidance available when you're applying to the scholarship. And we are asking you to complete some information about your household income. And that's people you're living with, people in your household that have a part in your outgoings. We're asking you about financial responsibility and if you have any dependents. And um, this isn't just dependent children, it could be parents or a sibling, any financial responsibility that you have. And then finally, we are asking you to demonstrate leadership potential, commitment to gender equality and leading ethically. The scholarship application will ask you what you've done or currently doing to support with women and gender equality in your career. And also as a lady law scholar, how you plan to support women and develop female leaders. I would say the committee are really looking for people who have already made steps to support women previously and want to continue and expand on this work. We are looking for people who can clearly demonstrate what they are doing in this space. And then in terms of how to apply, so you must submit both your application, so that's your MBA application and your laid law scholarship application at the same time. Um, this is really important. So let's just say as an example, if you're working on your MBA application and let's say you're ready to submit now and then you plan to submit your laid law scholarship application um, in a couple of weeks before the, the stage deadline and um, thinking that it's all submitted by the 5th of January. I'm afraid that won't be applicable and you won't be considered for the scholarship. This is really important. You need to submit both applications at the same time and they both need to be submitted by our stage two deadline, which is the 5th of January. So um, I expect the majority of you dialing in today are considering uh, 2024. So in order to, to be considered for late law, your MBA application and your scholarship application does need to be in by the 5th of January, which I know is fast approaching. Applications for the scholarship will be reviewed after each stage and candidates will be informed at each application stage if they have been successful in being shortlisted and final shortlisting will take place in March and interviews are expected to be in May. There is an email address on the slide now and if you do have any questions about the scholarship please do get in touch with us via that email that does sit with our funding team and they are able to answer they're able to answer any questions that you may have about the details of um, of the label scholarship and the process. And then in terms of some of the opportunities that the scholarship brings, it is a growing network. So there is a network of other laid law scholars from other schools, and it is a lifelong long network that you would get across industries and globally. There is an annual dinner with representatives of the Laid Law Foundation, um, side faculty and previous scholars. Um, this picture was, was taken with our inaugural scholars back in 2022 with uh, Lord Laid Law. And also as a scholar, you do get invitations to other business school side events. There are breakfasts, I mentioned the, the start of terms of scholars breakfast that we do host for our scholars. There are drinks events that you can get invited to, and um, we'll be able to hear from our panel in a moment about some of those events and opportunities that they have being a late law scholar. Okay, so sort of very sort of brief and quick from me, but before we do get into the panel discussion, I want to show a video that we created with some of our inaugural scholars. Um, we are currently heading into the fourth year with Laid Law and we're creating a really nice community and 
Our scholars are amazing and have different backgrounds, come from different corners of the globe, and they have different stories to tell. And actually, it was just quite nice, just as we were about to get on this session, just um, with some of our scholars greeting each other. Some of them haven't seen each other in a while. So it's a really nice um, community. And, and this video is just um, a small snippet of that. So I'm going to play the video now. I've always known that I wanted to study at Oxford, but it just felt like one of those perfect dreams that you have at the back of your mind that like would never come true. I'm a single mom and I was working two jobs. Life was really, really full on. How am I going to move countries? How am I going to manage a full-time MBA? I saw that there was a new scholarship being launched specifically for women leaders. The description was you need to have a passion to empower women and have a dream to perhaps become an executive somewhere. And I was like, that sounds like me. The Laid Law Scholarship is its empowerment, right? Scholarship empowers women like me who ordinarily couldn't have afforded an education like this one to help us come here and achieve every dream you have in your mind that you thought was impossible. Without these types of opportunities um, and the opportunities to not have to worry about funding and focus on your education, I wouldn't be here. It really gave me like a... I mean, network seems like the wrong term, like really like a sisterhood of women. 50% of the world is female. And if men continue to occupy positions of power and making decisions on behalf of women, we will never reach a society where problems are solved properly. You need more women at the top, right? And the truth is there's certain things that help you rise to the top. And one of that, honestly, is a business degree like this one. The Oxford MBA actually has one of the highest um, women participation rates of all MBAs. And I think the scholarship helps to do that. Recently, Laidlaw launched a fund, The Scholars. It's a 50 million pound fund and it invests in businesses started by the scholars. I think that is amazing because across the globe, women struggle to get funding from banks for business ventures they'd want to start. The MBA here is the perfect combination of business and impact. It doesn't talk about business in isolation. It talks about how it has a, a bigger role to play in society. Being able to represent myself, my family, my country, my continent, and help other people come up and do the same thing. And that is really the essence of the scholarship, to make people know that they can do things like this, you know, because they've seen people like me. The first thing that we usually do is disqualify ourselves because we think, oh my gosh, it's Oxford. I will never make it in there. Try it, apply, take a leap of faith. Imposter syndrome is something that affects a lot of people, but I would say that, you know, believe in yourself, go for it, and just put your best foot forward. Okay, so we'll head to the exciting part of this session, which is our panel discussion with our students and our alumni. So if I can ask our panel to, to turn their cameras on, and we'll start with some introductions. So um, Jessica, if we can start with you, if, you, if you can just let us know where it is. Well, I know you're a current student, so I'm assuming that you're dialing from in Oxford. And actually, I just want to say a big thank you to Jessica. I know it's currently assessment week at the moment with our current class. So I appreciate Jessica taking the time out to join us. Um, but if you can just say where it is that you were, uh, where it is that you were based uh, pre-MBA and what it was that you were doing before. Yeah, thank you, Mandeep. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jessica. Um, I'm from Indonesia. I used to run... Um, my own branding company um, and a nonprofit that supports girl and starting up their business. Um, I work with a lot of um, founders back in Indonesia and now I'm dialing in from Oxford here. Nice to see you guys. Great, thanks Jessica. And then we'll move on to, to you next news. 
Hi everyone, so I'm Luz. Um, I'm currently based in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, this is where I'm also from. Um, I have done the MBA uh, two years ago, so I'm part of that cohort. You probably recognize me in that, that video, the inaugural cohort. I'm currently a principal at Sahel Capital. It's a private equity firm um, that specializes in investing in agribusinesses across West Africa. Perfect. Thank you, Luz. We'll come over to you next, Ruti. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Shruti. I'm, um, I'm from India. And um, I used to work in Agritech uh, before. And uh, now I am starting up again uh, post-MBA. So an exciting path for me. I'm building a carbon credits platform for smallholder farmers in India. Oh, amazing. Thank you. And then last but certainly not least, Ithalua. <laughs> Hi everyone, good, well it's evening my time, so good evening. Um, my name is Ife Oluwa, you can call me Ife. I'm Nigerian, currently based in London. Uh, I'm a strategy and operations leader in the tech industry. Uh, Noose was my classmate, so I was very excited to see her. I don't think we've spoken in a while. Uh, the post-MBA life does that to you, um, but I'm super, super excited to do this. Uh, and every time Mandeep reaches out, I'm always excited to you know, have one of these sessions because I just believe that a lot more women should be doing this. Um, and I like that the numbers are rising, particularly with the Oxford MBA. Thanks for having me. Well, that's great. Thank you, Ife. I know thanks for, for joining us. It's great to be able to join by you all. I did mention that we have such an amazing community that we're building with Lake Law. So um, thank you everyone for submitting your questions. I can see they're coming through. Um, I will get started with just a couple of questions just to, to get the conversation going. Um, and I suppose it'll be great just to hear just from all of you in terms of why do you, why is the late law scholarship important to women considering the Oxford MBA? So I suppose if you cast your minds back, and I know for a couple of you, it might be sort of a good two, three years ago now when you were approaching the MBA application and the, the scholarship application. Um, why is it so important? So um, Jessica, should we start with you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think um, the late law scholarship is particularly fairly, very important for me because um, I obviously I can't afford being here without the scholarship. But also I know that coming from Indonesia, the government actually provide a very generous scholarship, but I was not qualified for that because of my previous education background. Um, I didn't qualify. Um, I didn't actually sort of like have the high school certificate to kind of qualify for that one so uh late law scholarship was the only scholarship that I applied to and it's like a make or break kind of thing for me so if I didn't get a scholarship I'll probably be still back home um not doing the MBA yeah so that's that's why it's important for me great thank you um Sharisi how about you um so for me um I um, I'll be honest, I was twice deferred. So I had to defer my position twice because I was not in a position to afford the MBA. Uh, so the late Lord de scholarship definitely made it happen, but also it was, I think for me, it wasn't just about the scholarship, but also about the community. Um, just being here in this group of esteemed accomplished women, who are out there to change the world, I think that's something that makes me really proud. Great, thank you, Shruti. Um, and Noose, we'll come over to you next. Yeah, so similar to uh, my co-panelists, I think um, the, the label of scholarship was uh, definitely instrumental for me to be able to join uh, the Oxford MBA. Uh, I was due to, to join in 2020, uh, September 2020 initially, and well, first because of COVID, but also because I did not uh, secure the, the funding uh, and had no scholarship at the time, I wouldn't have been able to, to join. So I deferred hoping that uh, the odds would be better that the following year and that's when I learned that uh, 
uh, the, there was this new scholarship that not only uh, could uh, allow me to to get uh, you know full full tuition, but also uh, that was a, a, a targeted that was targeting women, and it was really aligned with what I was doing at the moment, trying to support women at work uh, through my my network. So I really liked that uh, it was kind of validating um, the 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 moment, the the season I was I was uh, in at that moment, right? You know, offering me that that financial opportunity to do the, the, the MBA but also be uh, in, a, in a in an environment that values me as a as a as a female professional. Great, thank you. And then Ife. Yeah I think um personally um in life I I like to tell people that it's great to have those moments when you see that literally anything is possible um and the laid law scholarship for me was one of those life moments for me where you know I could tell that anything was possible so I was that person applying to Oxford you know the great Oxford right um with not so much plans about how I was going to fund it really just putting my heart in the ring um giving my very best you know to my applications and just really staying very hopeful for the best like you know because what really is the worst that can happen if you don't put yourself out there right the worst you guys would have told me was no you know so I was like hey why not just you know so literally put my heart in the ring you know waiting by my phone looking out for those emails on a daily basis you know that season where you're almost going crazy um and it was it was such an instrumental time you know in my life and my career um so I would say overall the late law you know scholarship to me just represented another phase in my life for endless possibilities. If I could add to that, um, I also just uh, re realized one more thing that if it hadn't been for the scholarship, I would have been stuck with a job right now. Like people who want to do jobs, that's their path and, you know, very happy for them. But I knew that post MBA, I still want to continue being an entrepreneur. And it's it's a path of like you you have to be privileged enough to choose that path. Otherwise, it's a very difficult option. So Laid Law also made that happen for me. Okay, great, thank you. So I can see a couple of questions that are coming through in terms of sort of about the application process for for the scholarship. So what are some things that made successful candidates stand out in their application? I can see a question, and um, I think there was a question about what it is that we're what do we look for in women to become a laid law scholar? So, so I mentioned um, sort of in the presentation sort of briefly that one of the, the selection criteria is that commitment to gender equality. So um, leading ethically and, and paying that forward. So I think it'd be great to hear from everyone in terms of how you demonstrated that in your application and how you approached the laid law scholarship application. So um, Shruti, can we start with you? Um, could you repeat the question? Like, like, in what way did I approach the application? Yeah, so how you approach so the the laid law scholarship application? So one of the selection criteria that we have for the scholarship is the commitment to gender quality, sort of leading ethically and paying that forward. So how did you demonstrate that in your laid law scholarship application? So how did you approach the application for the scholarship? So, um. Um, okay, so basically I, I looked at it from two points of view. Number one, uh, how was it that in my life, um, the different things I did, uh, how was my work or other aspects of my life uh, advancing the mission? And number two, um, how what I want to achieve in the future, uh, how would that be, um, like, will I become a representative for something? Uh, so I come from Agritech in India, and uh, it has two parts to it. Number one, in Agritech, especially back then, four years before I applied to the MBA, you didn't see a lot of women in Agritech, so there was no representation. Um, and then Agritech would have uh, sort of pathways going into, let's say, policy, if, you, if you're working with uh, government departments or with pharma cooperatives, so you would be working in villages where... Um, it would be weird for them to see um, um, a woman uh, coming to talk to them. So they'd probably end, end up addressing a male member of your team versus you. So things, small things like, like that. And I realized how important representation is. Um, so th those were two things that I focused on in my application. Great. Thank you, Shruti. Um, 
Noose, if we come over to you next. Yeah, so I think I tried to, to make my application as authentic as, as possible. I think I, this, I dedicated a lot of time to, to the, the essay particularly. Um, because I wanted, I wanted it to sound like what I felt I was doing for for women, and how I felt that the the the, the scholarship could support me uh, in the next step of my my career. Um, so I mean, it was easy because I I, I think it was really my, my reality. I, I focused on two things. Uh, the first being, um, you know, the the way I've uh, uh, incorporated the gender lens into my line of work. So I, I work in private equity. Uh, uh, I was uh, doing the same uh, line of, of job before before the MBA, a more impact focus um, um, fund. And uh, I was so interested in investing in women, uh, women-led uh, companies that I, I try to document myself, learn and then share that knowledge with, with my, uh, my, my colleagues and organize. So I, I explained in my application why it was so important for me to do that on a daily basis and, and why I thought that that was aligned with the values of, of the, the scholarship. Um, and, uh, and I then uh, went on to, to, to explain that um, I was trying to do this not only at work, but also in the, in the network uh, because I I, I was organizing those dinners with a female, uh, in, uh, female uh, professionals in finance in, in Abidjan, and we were all sharing our, our struggle as female uh, professionals. And actually, a uh, very good point, maybe, maybe if I can share that uh, with you. I, I did not even think at first to, to insert that uh, that activity in the um, in the, 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 the essay at first. I think I was discussing with my very close friends and mentors, let's say, for that, that process, because I'm not really used to that, that process coming from a, a very different uh, background, French education, etc. And uh, she was the one telling you, oh, have, you uh, have you thought about uh, adding this to, to your essay? And I was like, oh, yeah, of course, it, it, it's relevant. So, yeah, just to say that I, I was thinking about what was obvious, but uh, but also uh, was able to, to, to count on my support system, those people who were advising me to make sure that uh, my, my essay was more rock solid and, um, and that uh, I, I did not leave any any argument behind uh, and really stay uh, authentic. Okay, thank you, News. Yeah, some good tips that you're providing there, certainly to, to be authentic. That's, that's number one that I always say. Um, and also, yes, interestingly, how you did approach that essay and how you did get sort of tips and advice from, from your mentors, from your, from your friends. Um, Jessica, if we come over to you, and I suppose this might be still slightly fresh for, for you, given that it would have been sort of within the last year that you would have gone through the process. So um, how did you approach the, the application and how did you, how were you able to, to demonstrate um, that selection criteria of sort of gender quality and sort of um, leading ethically as well? Uh, yeah, I remember I was doing my essay, I think, exactly this year, last year, so last December, um, towards the deadline. <laughs> um, so I think basically what I covered in my scholarship essay was like how did I begin to get involved into supporting women, which is basically I was uh, working with these three male founders who wanted to make a product for like women um, in all male team and I was like the only woman and that sort of like uh, propels me into like wanting more women especially young women to like work in a tech sector in Indonesia and which lead me then to like work in a nonprofit um, that supports um, getting girls into STEM and then I think that sort of like lead uh, me to another opportunities um, that end up um, last year, I decided to, that I really want to support like female entrepreneurs and I end up creating a nonprofit that um, helps young girls to sort of like learn how to build their own product, how to build their own companies. Um, so it's basically, I think um, what, um, what's important is really to um, convey what's the reason, I guess, um, of why you do the things that you do um, I think that's that will help um, the people who read your essay to really 
get to know um, your motivation behind, you know, why you want to support women. And of course, you also want to share of like, if what's your next plan on like, after the MBA on how you would like to support women and what's your impact afterwards, if you have of the plan that you're planning to do afterwards. I think that's what I covered in my essays, basically. Hope that helps. Thank you, Jessica. And then Ife, we come in to you. If you can speak about your sort of process of approaching the scholarship application. Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, I think one of the most important piece of advice that I got during the process was nothing you've done is irrelevant, you know, at different phases of your life, you know, literally from uni to your work life to, you know, volunteering to your church life, literally to your family life. Nothing is irrelevant. You know, you just need to you know, put everything down and then you can sift through the information that you've gathered and, you know, push out the ones that you think convey your message the strongest. Um, so that was, you know, that was really one of the ways of approaching it. Literally did, you know, this was one process that involved a lot of introspection for me, right? I, I literally had to sit and have, you know, a lot of conversations with myself and saying, oh, I remember when that happened or when this happened, you know, um, and sometimes I know we like to think that it's always the big things that we should pull forward. But I think one of the, you know, times, I mean, this time with the Laidlaw Foundation is something, is a phase where I've seen that it's not always about the big things. You know, it's about sometimes the small things you've done for one woman, you know, you don't need to have done something that has scaled to supporting a thousand women or 500 women. You know, it's, you know, one woman that you cared about, that you did something to, you know, to help to transform her life. Just, you know, it's, and that's how intimate the essays can be right you know experiences you've had that have really shaped you um i had to put down a lot of those kinds of experiences you know really experiences that have made you the kind of person you are again you're putting your best foot forward right so it's a lot of things that maybe a lot of people don't even know about you but right you're you're writing to people who don't know you but you really want something from them so you're trying to put your very best foot forward and really portray that you know you're deserving of this award right so it's i think big things i'll say is everything you've done is is important you know put them down and then take out the things that are strongest you know to really portray the fact that you're deserving um and really it's not always about the big things you know so don't discount the small things that you've done everything really adds up you know when it comes to putting yourself forward as a strong candidate thank you yeah so it's all about putting your best foot forward and and, and sharing your story with the committee okay so I can see there are a couple of sort of questions along sort of the themes about benefits of, of being sort of a, a laid law scholar. And then also, I suppose that ties in quite nicely to thinking about the, the network as well. So if, and I'm not sure who wants to, to go first, but if you want to sort of talk about what are the benefits of being a laid law sort of scholar at Oxford. And I know Jessica, you might still be sort of getting, getting to sort of experience some of those benefits, but if there's anyone else in the panel who wants to sort of start and share some of the benefits that they experienced whilst being a scholar and being a student on the program i mean i'm happy to share yes great um, i think it's it's such a great community of women you know and i think you know i was very excited to see um about a month ago that hd you know how to say paris has been added as you know, one of the schools that the Laidler Foundation is also supporting. That first and foremost also just means that the community now would be bigger. You know, it's even larger, you know, it's closer to, you know, Oxford. It's not, you know, it's not so far away. Um, and that just creates, you know, a support system, right? That you just never know when you might need to tap into. Um, and I'm sure many of you here know also about the venture fund that the Labour Scholarship has. Um, that is really to support, you know, people like Shruti, people like me who are also thinking of starting my own business years down the line, you know, that is funding that can, you know, they can provide you your first, you know, angel investment, you know, you just never know. And that is a luxury that not many people have, even other people who are scholars, right? Um, you know, another thing is, you know, just being able to tap into the network of, you know, what everyone else is doing, right? You know, we've had meetups with the scholars at London Business School at Columbia, you know, we've met up at the, you know, the LBS has like this massive women's conference every year. We've had, you know, private dinners for only late law scholars at big conferences like that, you know, where they're bringing some of the most remarkable women to come and speak to us, share their personal stories. And that's, that's, just, that's just access to network that ordinarily you might not have had. 
Um, and I've personally realized it's very important, you know, in life as you go ahead, you know, your skills are great, but at the point, it's now, you know, the relationships you've built and nurtured, you know, and how you can use that to your advantage. So I think the network one, you know, the community, you know, the support that even comes financially with the fund, you know, and just how large the community is growing uh, are some of the big, the big benefits for me. All right. Thank you, Ife. And then Shruti, so how did you sort of, what would you say were the benefits of being a scholar and also how have you benefited from the, from the Laidlaw Network? Um, so to add to what Ife said, um, I would say that Oxford is um, a very complex network, right? Um, I never understood how, you know, if you, if you want a direct answer to a question, like how do I find this at Oxford? Like, where do you Google, whom do you ask? It's so complex. So I realized that more than anything, Oxford's built as, you know, like, um, like I always uh, used to wonder, like, why do we have things like formal dinners and colleges and this and that? And I realized that they try and create these structures to just keep bridging gaps between people in different, different ways. And where I'm leading with this is essentially that Laidlaw is one of those very important bridges because... Um, I remember every every semester, at least once, we would have like a dinner or a movie night together, all the scholars. Um, sometimes we would have scholars joining us from previous years, like like when I applied, Ife, Nus, uh, Asha, uh, these three really helped me out. Um, so now it's one of those things that is just not these people on a name on a list, but people I know that I have gratitude towards and I know that I want to pay it forward as well. So it's little things like that that add to your experience uh, when you're studying in Oxford because someone can just come in and then you might feel overwhelmed that you're by yourself, you're all alone. But when you come in as a laid low scholar, it's, it's a different step inside Oxford, right? Um, every term we would have a dinner with the... Um, uh, with the school admin, Mandeep, Amy, as well. Uh, we would have like a direct access to uh, Dean Datta. Um, so it was little things like that that made us feel like, okay, you know what? Uh, we can get more out of this one year if we choose to. Um, one of my favorite moments and people like, you know, unless you're there, you'd be like, okay, this is like cute thing, but so what? Um, we had uh, one of my fellow scholars, her name is Lucy. And uh, I think she's, if I'm not wrong, she's from Ghana. And uh, uh, they organized this beautiful uh, high tea for us at the Ashmolean. So Ashmolean has like this rooftop terrace. And it was her first time doing high tea. And it was such a transformative experience for her. She loved it to bits. She was like this little kid just enjoying herself. And then later on, she told us the story that she's the, the one of 14 kids. You know, she never thought she'd be at a platform like this where she would be having that experience. Like that experience for her validated who she had become in that moment. So I think Laidlaw's gotten us all of that and much more. And so, yeah, guys, give it your best shot. Oh, I love that. Great, great advice, Ruti. And yes, I think that was sort of mentioned in, in the video that we saw in terms of, you know, imposter syndrome. I know it affects everyone, but... It's all about putting your best foot forward and you don't know if you're going to give it a shot. So, okay. Thank you, Shruti. Um, Noose, is there anything that you'd like to add in terms of how you sort of benefited from being a Laidlaw scholar and how you sort of, how you're able to, to utilise the, the Laidlaw sort of network as well? Yeah, I mean, I just have to, just going to have to double down on what has, has been uh, said. I think uh, first thing for me, Laidlaw uh, scholars were like a weapon for tea <laughs> for me at Oxford because I remember precisely I was talking to Ife even before uh, we joined and we were so excited to know that oh okay so first of all we're both from West Africa and then on top of it we also made scholars so it created sort of a, a, an excitement before we joined the, the cohort and once we were there I think the first couple of people I really connected with uh, on the first day, we found out that we're actually labor scholars as well. Um, so I would say that this, this first week, uh, we tried to, to connect on a, you know, it, yeah, on, a, on another level, and it, it continued through through the years. Some uh, some are, you know, my 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 closest friends from the MBA, uh, and we are uh, we really kept in touch. We, we and 
when we don't, <laughs> because life happens, like I just, uh, I just saw Ife. I'm so happy to to see her and get to know what what, what she's doing. So I think uh, it does create this uh, circle, uh, uh, this privileged circle, right? Uh, when we are between us, uh, which is great, but also this access, this privileged access to to faculty. Uh, I remember every time we had this, you know, uh, quarterly uh, uh, dinner or breakfast with the uh, with the admin. Uh, I always felt lucky, you know, I always felt lucky that I was able to take a step back and actually think, okay, wow, so we're doing this and people like really care uh, about uh, how, how we're doing it at, 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 uh, uh, during the MBA. And, and also just to insist on, on that event uh, that was done at, uh, at uh, LBS, uh, it was truly fantastic for me. It's one of the highlights of, of the MBA, both the conference and the dinner, the private dinner that we had the, the, the night before, because um, it was really, really, really inspiring. And, and I think um, the, the, the fact that we are in this, this scholarship uh, constantly reminds us of our value as, as female professional and, and inspire inspire us to really do better to reach our full potential. The uh, Oxford MBA does a fantastic job at doing that, but this is your extra nudge, you know, uh, to feel that you know, you've been chosen among all these fantastic women because that's the reality. I mean, you see all these women from the MBA, and everybody is so fantastic. You know, they have great backgrounds. So to say that you've been picked among the creme de la creme. <laughs> So, so to say, uh, it really gives you that extra, uh, you know, nudge and uh, extra uh, attention that is really great during the whole year. Um, and I'm happy that the, this network is growing, and we will continue um, to have a, a meaningful connection with uh, the current cohort and also with other schools. I think that that's really a, a great, great news. Great, thank you so much, news. And then Jessica, I suppose if in terms of have you thought about how it is that you are going to look to, to utilise the, the Laidlaw network? And um, I know you're sort of coming towards the end of sort of Michaelmas term, but has there been a sort of any particular sort of key sort of highlights or benefits that you've been able to, to reap in terms of being a Laidlaw scholar? Yeah, um, I think to echo Shruti, I mean, I'm here because of the help of previous Laidlaw scholars as well. Um, Shruti has been helping me a lot. Um, Asha, I think uh, also connected with Eve, um, and perhaps news before this, um, before I applied um, through LinkedIn, I'm happy to pay it forward if anyone wants to connect. Please don't send random connections. Please do send a message that you were in a panel today um, so that I, I don't really accept random connections. But, you know, if, if anyone needs any help, um, feel free to connect. Um, I think the late law scholars are, I don't know, they're just particularly, I don't know how you guys choose it, but they're particularly generous and kind. So I'm really happy to be part of um, scholar who are not only like smart, but they're also very good hearted. Like if they're speaking about impact, they are really working towards an impact. It's not just like a greenwashing and a woke washing or anything like that. So um, it's a group of genuine ladies um, that really wanna make a change in the world. Um, and I think also, um, other than that, um, we've been to, um, so I think the scholarship sent us to London a um, few weeks back to attend the Women of Future Awards where we met um, other MBA alumni, Lily Esnor, who is also an entrepreneur. Um, she's working in her startup, Jack Fertility, um, which she got nominated to for the awards. So it was really amazing to get to connect to other MBA alumni who's also um, working um, now in London. And um, I'm still looking forward for another um, amazing um, conference that you guys are going to send us to. But yeah, um, so far, I think the best part of um, being in part of the Late Loan Network is the community itself, the community of the scholars. I, I just felt like, especially, you know, to mention that this week is a, an assessment week. I've been getting help from the scholars to really prepare for my assessment. I've, I'm, I don't came from like a business finance background. I did a little bit for my business, but not a lot. And the things that they cover today in the exams, I learned it from my fellow scholar who really helped me to go through all the exams. And even um, we we wear this like sub fox to the exam school today, which is sub fox that I got from Shruti. Um, so it's really, 
a sort of like a paid forward kind of network. So it's it's really genuine. It's really it's full of bright, smart young people that's also very genuinely um kind. So yeah, I think that's the biggest benefit for me. Great. Thank you, Jessica. And yes, it's it's really great to hear that you're all paying it forward and looking to help and support each other. And as uh, I think just to echo, I think we've mentioned it a few times, but it is such a great community that we have here with our laid law, our laid law community. Um so thank you. Thank you, Jessica. So um we I suppose we're I know that time sort of um has gone by quickly and we've got sort of a few moments left. So I'm just having a look and I can see some questions and um, I've got, this is a really sort of good question from, from Laura. Thank you for your question, Laura. So Laura is keen to hear more about how the school and the scholarship supports and helps young mothers, but then also key breadwinners join the programme with their families. Would appreciate if the panellists can speak to this or if, we, or if they have any experience. So I'm not sure if anyone on the panel does have sort of experience or maybe they can speak about someone else. So, I know just for example, actually, I know Ife and Noose, there's Divinia was was in your cohort who was um a young mother. So I'm not sure if you can speak to or answer some some parts of that question just in terms of how it sort of shaped her experience and the support that, that she received. Yeah. I mean, um, so if I get this correctly, how you know this impacts like breadwinners in, in their families, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, Davinia, we had, so we had a classmate and, you know, fellow scholar, um, Davinia, who had, you know, a lovely little girl, Olivia, who she came with. Um, and, you know, just seeing how, how, you know, every time Davinia had to speak in, you know, any late loss setting, she would always end up, you know, being very emotional just because, you know, she honestly didn't think she was going to be where we were, we all were. You know, you know, a lot of things seem impossible, right? And then you're doing this, it's it's tough doing it alone. How much more doing it, you know, with with you know, with family, right? It's you know, I have an older sister who just finished a master's degree with two kids. I honestly don't know how she's done it. Um, but I think more and more, and which is why we have platforms like this where we discuss that everything is possible. I think anything is possible to women. I, I genuinely believe that. Um, and it's great to always see representation of how, you know, women, single, married, whatever shape, version, you know, don't give up on their plans, their dreams, you know. It might be harder at different stages, but, you know, it's always just great to see how well we push the boundaries regardless. Um, and then, you know, those are the, you know, for people who are breadwinners on this call, those are the things that make up the stories that you're going to share with the late law team in your essays, right? It's It goes back to all we've been saying about authenticity. It goes back to putting your best foot forward, sharing stories very personal to you, right? Um, and that really, really honestly could give you an edge over other applicants, you know, because these are your life stories and these are the things that have shaped who you are today. So um, I'd say if you have a lot of family responsibilities and you want to give this a shot, you should, you know, there are a lot of people who do and get in. So like, why not, right? What's the worst that can happen? Um, is what I would say. Right. Yeah, one, one, one thing I can, I can add to that, I mean, you know, the yeah. Davinia story is, is amazing and, and there are other people in our cohort who are breadwinners who are really supported by their families and they were able to make it so really don't limit yourself and, you know, look at all options. One one thing I can add to that is uh, check with the college once you have, you know, the, the, the mission. I think I know that some colleges are even more open to, you know, welcome families. I know specifically that Davinia picked Green Templeton because they, um, they had some... Um, uh, grants for 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 families. Uh, they even offer uh, accommodation, specific accommodation for for families. So they've really been helpful uh, on on that that journey for for her, given given her special circumstances. But so that's also something that you may want to check um, once you you admit it. Great, thank you, Nis. Um, and then. There's also a question about, so in terms of, and we've spoken about sort of the late law sort of scholarship, it's there to support women who want to sort of become leaders and executives in, in their organisations or in the private sector. So how do you feel that the scholarship was able to support that? So was there any particular sort of, and I suppose this is kind of more linked to the Oxford MBA as well, I suppose, in terms of maybe thinking about some of the courses that you took, but in terms of with the actual scholarship, was there any sort of particular let's say, for example, any mentoring or any ways that you were able to to sort of leverage that. And I know sort of, Ife, in terms of sort of your roles that you're working with with Amazon at the moment, was there 
sort of a way in terms of with with the scholarship that sort of allowed you to sort of you know step up and and be, and be a leader um i'd say that overall right every every interaction you have um with the Lilo foundation you know leaves you um inspired and wanting to do more um, the CEO of the Laidlaw Foundation is super close to the Oxford Laidlaw Scholars. Um, she's very lovely, and that's someone you can, you know, we literally, we talk, I talk to her on LinkedIn all the time, you know, personally, you know, just easy access to people that, you know, might have seen far off. Um, if you're like me who, you know, joining Oxford was the, you know, was your, you know, you were migrating from your own country, um, it's always good to have that initial network, you know, while you're settling down, because it just, take time to build, you know, relationships. So really all of that. And then, you know, every time I have interactions with, whether it's my peers as scholars or, you know, people from the Laidlaw Foundation or, you know, any events we find ourselves, right? I'm always inspired. Um, even when we went for the, you know, the venture, the launch of the venture fund, you know, that brought together everyone, in, including the undergrad scholars, you know, the Laidlaw Foundation also sponsors undergrads, right? And it brought everyone together in one space and you'd be amazed what people are doing and just, you leave those those sessions, you know, knowing that you can do more, um, knowing that people are doing more and so you can do it too. Um, so I'd say be very open-minded, you know, about every session you attend, whether it's one that even the Oxford MBA organizes, you know, there's always an agenda and they really want us to get the very best out of it. So um, just stay very open-minded and be prepared to, you know, to be able to take things forward and, you know, excel really. Great, yeah. thank you. Uh, if I may add something, um, yeah, apart from like the events that we've done and the community, one thing that the, uh, the Lilo Scholarship did uh, for me was to raise my my uh, my online profile. I mean, I know that we were extra lucky because we were the inaugural cohort, so there was a lot of communication about around our profile. I mean, you've seen the video uh, when the, the when the scholarship was announced, and there was a lot of uh, you know social media posts around it as well. Uh, and I know that for me, it's, uh, for someone who is not very active on LinkedIn, it's given me opportunities uh, to communicate on LinkedIn, to actually write posts about what we were doing. Uh, and there's also one thing, the spotlight uh, that uh, we've been asked to do. I know that I spent a lot of time writing that spot spotlight. Uh, Christopher was uh, almost harassing her, saying, oh, it's next month, it's your turn. <laughs> it took me so long, but uh, the questions were great. And, uh, yeah, it, it really helped me with the introspection, which I thought I thought I was done doing that after my Oxford application. Why do I have to sit down and now think again about what's my biggest regret, etc. But it turns out it's a beautiful piece uh, of you know uh, information or reflection on who you are, what's your profile uh, uh, as a leader. And and uh, I found out that uh, someone who wanted to interview me for a podcast that uh, when I, I got back in Abidjan was very impressed about my my background, etc. And I, I we went to I mean we, we had an, an interview to prepare for the podcast and and she quoted so many things that I said in that that um, that piece and it was like well, how do you know all of that oh yeah I read I read the through your your spotlight and all this information so I was really amazed and I thought you know thank God they they had me do this right because it was well structured it was a real well thought so uh, and it's a great exercise and it's there you know so yeah. Um, one positive thing, <laughs> among others. Yeah, I mean, Mandiba, I should say, you guys have made us some mini celebrities. You know, uh, <laughs> everyone who's reached out to me on LinkedIn, I'm not even kidding. 90% of them say, oh my God, if I saw your video on YouTube, I'm like, wow. You know, my family <laughs> has seen it. You know, my friends have seen it. People at church have Random people, I'm like, yo. <laughs> you know, like, just really, like you know it's and it's a good feeling at least you're doing something that yeah. inspires others you know not just I mean the benefit is there for yourself right you know the yeah. spotlight and all of that but you're you'll be amazed that there's so many people you've inspired I know that that video that people have seen on YouTube really just you know opened up a lot of women's minds so you know what heck I'm going to apply for this thing right because you've seen a lot of people you know like you talking about their experiences you know 
been, you know, recording the experiences and whatnot, right? So thanks, Laidla. Thanks, Oxford. You know, I'm glad to keep that video online forever. Yeah. Um, my kids would like to see it, I'm sure. Uh, but thank you, guys. Yeah, it's been really good. Yes, and and as well as as I think for Saka, I think what she quotes is saying, you know, most people you, as women, you discredit yourselves, but you know, try it, apply it. You don't know. And also, Aoife, you were in the Women in Leadership Alliance video as well. So I suppose you were sort of like doubly sort of famous and out there. <laughs> um, okay, so well, I, I know we're sort of running sort of out of time now. So, um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop our contact details onto into the chat to everyone. So that's the Oxford MBA email address. So if there are any sort of particular questions that we've not been able to, to cover today and answer today, please do get in touch. And I know that... Um, I think, as you can see, all of our scholars are are friendly and are helpful. And I'm sure if you are were to sort of reach out to them, I know Shruti did actually. Um, I think she did mention something. Well, she did mention at the start of the session that she'd be happy to 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 connect and help with anyone when it comes to thinking about sort of their their scholarship application. Um, but just as we've got a couple of moments left, it'll just be great just to end with any sort of final words and any sort of advice that you would have for our audience. And I suppose maybe actually, if you cast your minds back when you were at this point, was there maybe something that you wish you had known that you hadn't? So um, Jessica, if we, we start with you. Yeah, um, I would say reach out to people, um, reach out to the alumni, not only the late law scholar, but reach out to like the alumni and current student of Oxford MBA. I think that's the most important thing because like, um, it's important to get the sense of what you're getting into and I think you'll only get to know what you're getting into um, what you're getting out of Oxford community if you get in touch with people so definitely get in touch yeah um, I would say that uh, first I think um, we're not able to text you guys but uh, feel free to reach out to us on LinkedIn with questions, um, very happy to help with the application. Um, I would say from my personal experience that um, I think I spent an equal amount of time uh, with the scholarship application, like thinking about it, introspecting, brainstorming, putting ideas as drafts, uh, getting my friends, family, previous scholars, mentors, everyone to read them. Uh, then doing different like multiple drafts and new versions and then doing the final one. I think um, for me at least uh, the application changed drastically from the first version to the last version. Uh, sometimes there were parts that I completely read it from scratch. So again it's don't think of it as just like a addendum to your main MB application. It's a whole application in itself. So give it that much time. I think it's gonna it's gonna be worth it. Great, thank you. And I have so apologies. I did see that. I think the the chat was disabled, but it has. I have put it so you should be able to sort of chat and and to, get to everyone in the session. So, um, okay. Thank you, Shruti. Um, Noose, we come over to you next. Yeah. So no, I really think that uh, while writing this uh, application, you should really be confident. You know, like exude confidence, writes what what's on your mind, and um, we've shared that before. You know, uh, I feel was it you every every bit of information of, of experience is, is valid. So you need to have that that confidence and really, uh, uh, you know, write it the best you can. Uh, uh, Trust your support system as well. Don't don't do this on your own. I think it's very very important. Trust the, uh, you know, reach out to people. Trust people who know you best to review this application and give you uh, ideas to 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 write the best application you can. Great, thanks, Nus. And then Ife, we come to you next. Yeah, I think mine is really like guys. If anyone here is second guessing enough of that, like. It's a waste of time, second guessing and overthinking. You know, um, when I was at Oxford, it was, I think, we're probably at 46% women. Now it's at 51% women. So if that proves anything, it means there are less women second guessing themselves and just putting themselves out there. So you must put yourself out there. Um, but what I always say is no mediocre applications, no half baits, no, you know, nothing that is not your best foot forward, guys. You know, it's it's a lot of people competing for the spots. So you want to make sure that you're giving yourself the very best shot. And that involves asking for help, you know, and just putting your best out there because 
honestly, what is the worst that can happen? And I believe the worst that can happen is actually doing nothing. So, you know, what if you put in an application? What if it works out? What if you're doing a panel next year? You know, like we, we're, we're doing now. So give it your, put your heart in it, give it your very best, you know, shot. And, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, a lot of you guys on this call in the next class. All the very best. Great. Thank you so much. So a big thank you to our panel. So a big thank you to Jessica, Noose, Shruti and Ife. Thank you so much for, for joining and for sharing your experiences. I can see some sort of great comments in the chat and agree that it was very sort of motivating and very inspiring. So yes, I hope that's been really helpful. And um, I wish everyone the best of luck as you start sort of thinking about your MBA application and your laid law scholarship application. Do it, put your best foot forward and best of luck. And thank you, everyone. And with that, we'll close out the session. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye.